In Creole Parametric Mechanisms, you can use a rigid connection in order to fix two components to each other using standard assembly constraints. So then you might be wondering, why wouldn't you just use regular assembly constraints? Well, you would use a rigid connection in a situation where you would need a moving mechanism connection on one side and a fixed connection to another component on the other side. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here in my assembly, I have a wheel. The wheel is capable of rotating like all wheels should. I will click on it and you can see that it's moving over here. But also we have a U-joint over on the other side. So I've got the U-joint that is capable of moving. I want to connect the U-joint to the wheel. And where the component should be connected to the U-joint, well, that would be a mechanism connection, but it should be fixed rigidly to the actual wheel itself. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to clean up my screen a little bit. Let's hide this component over here. Also, this knuckle component, this is sort of my ground, so I'm going to hide that for a moment. So I need to create a connection to complete my U-joint. Let's hit the assemble button. And let me go to where these different files are. Okay, here we have the U-joint that I want. Let me grab the instance of the family table that I should use. And let me just drop it on the screen over here. Let's open it up in its own separate window so that we can see it. All right, to connect it to the other side of the U-joint, that's going to be a mechanism connection. Let's go to the Placement tab. I can use the User-Defined drop-down list to change this to a cylinder connection. And in order to define the cylinder connection, I just need to grab a couple of cylindrical surfaces. Let me pick this cylindrical surface from the existing part of the U-joint and the surface over here. And so, where the heck is this? All the way over here for now. But that's okay, and I can just start to rotate it into position. So, and let's move it about over here or so. And at this point right now, it's cluttering up my screen. It's hard for me to select my assembly references. So I'm going to turn off the display of the component in the main window. And I want the splines to be fixed to each other, and that should be a rigid connection. So let's go to the new set option on the placement tab. By default, it's giving me a cylinder connection, but instead I will use the drop down list to change this to a rigid connection. And so then we can define our constraints by picking references from the component and also from the assembly. I'll pick a couple of cylindrical surfaces. Let me turn on the display real quick just to make sure that it didn't flip in the wrong orientation. That's good. Let me turn the display back off. And let's see another constraint we can add in here. You can add enough constraints, usually up to three constraints, in order to get things uh, so that they are moving with one another. And just because I'm not sure what the exact distance is between these surfaces, let me just use a parallel and turn the display back on. Let's hit the flip button. And so there we have our rigid connection between those two components. I'm going to hit the check mark in order to complete it. Now let me turn on the display of my wheel again. And let's now try testing the motion. I'll use the drag component. And I'll click over here on this component. And you can see that I'm getting the motion that I want. I'm spinning the first U-joint, which is spinning the other U-joint, which is spinning the wheel. So again, the rigid connection allows you to have it with motion on one side and fixed on the other side. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.